Hello, and welcome to the Cleanroom HVC Design Webinar. My name is Wei Sun, and I'm with Ancisco. It is based in Ann Arbor, Michigan. In addition, I'm also very active in ISO Cleanroom Standards and the activities for IEST and ASHRAE. Today, we are going to discuss about clean room standards, classification, particles, design consideration, airflow pattern, airflow quantity, pressurization, and the typical HVAC systems. As we know, clean room technology has been very widely utilized for multiple industry, for semiconductor, microelectronic, pharmaceutical, biotech, aerospace, and many others. What is a clean room? Clean room is a special enclosed area in which particulates and contaminants are kept within street limits. Its indoor environment typically has the following control parameters or objectives. Common requirements, temperature, humidity, sound, and vibration, and lighting. These are typical requirements for common commercial spaces as well as for clean rooms. But for clean rooms, there is another special set of the requirements. For example, airflow pattern, room pressure, particle contamination, microbial contamination, electrostatic discharge, gas phase contamination, and many process specifics. Before 2001, U.S. utilized Federal Standard 209. 209E actually was the latest version before the ISO standards were introduced. So after 2001, U.S. and many other countries, they utilized ISO 14644 series, part one through part A, are basically for particles and molecular contaminations. Another ISO series, 14698, including part one, two, and three, these are for biocontamination. If we put the Federal Standard 209 and ISO in a combined table, Federal Standard has six classes. They are defined in five particle sizes, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and 5.0 micron. ISO has nine classes, two class cleaner, one class dirtier. They are defined in six particle sizes, including additional one micron. If we put the two standards in an overlapping chart, blue lines are for the federal standards, red dash lines is for the ISO standards. As we can tell, these two standards, they are not identical, but in the industry, we roughly consider themselves equivalent under certain classes and the particle sizes. When we're talking about clean room air cleanliness class, it is very important also to mention under which occupancy state. There are three states for the industry, as built, at the rest, and in operation. For as built, basically we have no production equipment, no personnel. For at the rest, there is production equipment, but no personnel. In operation, we have installation in function in specified manner and with specified number of working personnel. For pharmaceutical industry, there is another classification they call it grades, grade A, B, C, and D. They define the occupancy states in two categories, at the rest and in operation. Typically, we consider grade A 
is equivalent to ISO 5, B to 6, C to 7, and D to 8. However, if we look at the total particle counts, we found that at a 0.5 or 5.0 micron, the total allowed particle counts may not be fully identical. So ISO number-based classification versus pharmaceutical letter-based classification, they are not truly identical. In addition to particle counts, for pharmaceutical and healthcare industries, there is another microbial contamination limits should be considered. For grade A, B, C, and D, each of these grades have a maximum allowed CFU counts for air sample, which is uh, airborne, or for surface contamination, which could be saddle plate, contact plates, or glove prints. In addition to ISO standards, we also have other standards, guidelines, and certifications. USB 797, USP 800. For AST, we have RP 12.3, which is considerations in clean room design. We also have ASHRAE Handbook Application 2015, Chapter 18. Another new book we call the ASHRAE Clean Room Design Guide, which is in progress and will be print in 2016. We have a few other clean room and laboratory related procedures and certification, NEBB, AABC, and CETA. For particles, typically we consider from 0.01 micron up to 100 micron. Anything larger than 100 microns can be seen with the naked eyes. The ISO definition focuses more in the middle range, from 0.1 to 5 microns. So these are the ISO definition. For particle size larger than 5 micron, we call it microparticles. Less than 0.1 micron, we call these as ultrafine particles. There are two major categories for particle sources. One is what we call external, including outdoor air or indoor transfer air between rooms. Uh, indoor transfer air between rooms typically we call a particle migration. Uh, from two rooms which are adjacent together. For internal, we have a particle generation from people, from work surface, from equipment, from either raw or finished material, from liquid, from chemicals, and even from room construction materials. Each of these sources, we have respective control methods For physical controls of airborne particles, we have uh, three strategies. Filtration, you can use a HEPA or OPA filters. Dilution, you can pump in more air to dilute the contaminated air concentration inside the clean room. Or you can use isolation to control the sources of particle generation and you can remove them before they migrate into the rest clean room. And you can use a combination of any of these three strategies. Microbiological contamination, unlike non-viable particles which cannot reproduce, viable particles, or we call the living particles, could reproduce at a rapid rate if nutrient and the environment are favorable we can control them by physical means, such as heat, radiation, filtration, or by chemical means, using sterilization or disinfection. One of the interesting phenomena for clean rooms is the seating filter coverage. 
For ISO class 4 and a cleaner, you typically use OPA filters. For ISO class 5 or cleaner, you may use HEPA filters. Virtually, the cleaner class you have, the high percentage of the seating going to be occupied by either HEPA filters or OPA filters. For example, for ISO class 3, you may have 100% seating covered by OPA filters. Room airflow volume or quantity. This table was published by IST 12.1 as their recommended products before 2007. This is what we call the table methods. In this table, you can see each cleanness class is responding to a recommended air change per hour range. And this table was published based on consensus of experts, but there is no scientific basis. So when you use this table, keep in mind a precaution is necessary. Recently, Ashray has done some further research, try to establish a mathematical means to calculate or to estimate air change per hour rates. There is a new trend for clean room energy conservation, which is we call demand-based flow control. The strategy is to adjust or to modulate supply air rates to maintain the same or acceptable cleanliness class based on particle sensing during both occupied and unoccupied modes. Generally, the higher room concentration rates you have, the higher air change rate you are going to provide to maintain the required cleanliness class. You can use the stage flow control or you can use variable flow control. When we use the AHU or recirculation fan, you can use the single fan with a two-speed or three-speed motor. Or you can use a single fan with a variable speed drive. If you use a fan wall unit type, you can turn off a number of fans to lower the airflow, or you can use variable speed drive for multiple fans at the same pace. If you use a fan filter units, you also can turn off a number of uh, fan filter units to lower the air change rate and to maintain the maintain airflow as uniformly as possible. Also, you can use a variable speed drive for multiple fans. Airflow patterns. We have a four airflow patterns typically utilized for clean rooms. The first is non-unidirectional flow. You have a ceiling supply clean air and you have low sidewall return. The second type is unidirectional flow. You have a high density ceiling supply air and the return air is through raised floor, typically utilized perforate floor panels. In this case, you can achieve much higher or much cleaner cleanliness class and uh, the air change rate is much higher than the first case. The combination of non-unidirectional and a unidirectional flow is what we call a mixed flow. At the room level, you have a ceiling supply, you have a low sidewall return. For the most critical area, you can have HEPA canopy and underneath of the canopy, you can achieve cleaner class for the most critical area. The last one is called a mini environment. In this case, you have a seating supply, low sidewall return for the general room. But for the most critical area, you can have an enclosed 
small area with a HEPA filter at the ceiling with indirect human contact with the objects. Floor arrangement. Three types typically utilized for clean room industry. Ball room, which is the big open room for clean rooms. The second is what we call a service chase. In this case, you have a clean rooms designed in a very narrow, uh, in many very narrow rooms, and the, both sides of a clean room, you are going to have a shear return chase to let air to return back to the ceiling space. And also, you can use the MIDI environment. In this case, the large area, you may have a less clean class clean room, but for the most critical areas, you can use the MIDI environment to save the energy and also to reduce the cost. Pressurization. The purpose of a pressurization is to direct desired fluid directions and to minimize undesired airborne particles, microbial, and chemical fuel migrations. There are two conditions. When door is closed, what we call it is called a static condition. When the door is being opened or closed, we call it dynamic conditions. Both of these conditions, you may see particle migration from dirty area toward the clean rooms, but during door opening or door operation, this particle migration level could be much higher. Why do particles migrate between clean room and adjacent space? Particles can migrate through cracks, such as the minor leaks on wall, ceiling, joints, duct and pipe penetrations, and also the air gap between door and the door frame, where a pressure differential exists across clean room enclosure. We can look at these three scenarios. Left side is the hallway, the right side is the clean room. The first case is we have the same pressure. The second is the clean room is pressurized. The third case is the clean room is depressurized. When the clean room is pressurized, you push a particle inside the clean room to outside. When the clean room is depressurized, you are actively draw drawing the particles from the surrounding area toward the clean rooms. So pressure differential can force particles to migrate either in or on through cracks on clean room enclosure. Particle can also migrate through these cracks when a particle concentration difference exists across the clean room enclosure due to mass diffusion until an equilibrium is reached. We also have uh, three scenarios. The left one is hallway and the clean room has the same cleanliness class. There is no pressure differential for these three cases. The middle case is the hallway is one class dirtier than a clean room. So particle can migrate not by the pressure because there is no pressure difference but by the mass diffusion, because the hallway has a higher concentration than the clean room. The right case is that uh, we have uh, three class particle concentration difference. Hallway is much dirtier, so even there is no pressure difference, much more particles could be driven or could be forced from hallway to clean room. So particle concentration difference can also force particle to migrate through cracks on the clean room enclosure. What is the net gain or loss through migration? There are two forces. One is under pressure differential, so air move by force. Another is on a particle concentration difference, particle can move by mass diffusion. Based on the combination of these conditions, these two forces could work in the same or opposite directions. 
So what is the combined effect? This is the table illustrate the basic phenomena for the combined effect. Three cases for particle concentration. Concentration between hallway and a clean room are the same. Clean room has a lower concentration or clean room has a high concentration. The pressure relation also have three conditions. Clean room has identical pressure as on site, so pressure differential is zero. Or if the clean room is pressurized, clean room has a high pressure. Or if the clean room is depressurized, clean room has a low pressure. So based on three conditions for concentrations and pressure differentials, you have nine possible combinations. And uh, this chart, this table basically indicated what will be the combined effect. So sometimes could depends on the prevailing force. Basically, the prevailing force determines the particle net gain or loss through migration into clean rooms. Pressure differential criteria. This table listed the new ASHRAE research outcome. On the left the column, it indicates the cleanliness difference between clean room and the surrounding area. The second column is the minimum pressure differential requirement when the door is in closed condition, or we call a static condition. The right column indicates the dynamic consideration when the door is in operation. It suggests if an airlock is required or not. Let's say if we have one class difference between clean room and the surrounding area, 0.04 inch pressure differential is considered adequate and the airlock is not required. If the surrounding area is two class dirtier than the clean room, then pole 4 inch pressure differential is required and also based on your door operation on daily basis if more than 30 times a day then the airlock will be required if less than 30 times airlock is optional and when you use the airlock you want to make sure that uh, you have a two doors in series to constitute an airlock. Each door you will have a 0.2 inch pressure gap and the time delay between two doors is required. Let's look further down. If the clean rooms is three class cleaner than the surrounding area, once again 0.4 inch pressure differential is required and an airlock is definitely required. Particle migration control. As we talked about earlier, if you want to have the room pressurized, you want to make sure the incoming air or supply air is more than the departing air, which is typically the return air and the exhaust air. So the offset flow is positive. In this case, the air, the room is pressurized air is pushing out from clean room to outside. If the incoming air is equivalent to the departing air, then the room pressure will be in neutral. In other words, the room is not pressurized or depressurized. In this case, there is no particle migration based on the pressure differential particle could still migrate if there is a concentration difference. If the room is depressurized, you want to make sure the incoming air is less than the departing air and the offset is minus. In this case, the room is depressurized 
and you actively draw particles or air from one side into the plenum. Traditionally, we have several methods, what we call the roots of thumb method for offset design. The first is what we call flow percentage method. Example is the VA, US VA hospital standard. So in this method, if you want to have the room have a neutral pressure, you want to make sure the incoming air is equivalent to departing air. When positive, you want to have 15% more incoming. Two positives, you want to have 30% more positive supply air. One negative, 15% less. Two negatives, 30% less. So this is what we call the uh, flow percentage method. The second method is flow differential method. A typical example is for US CDC guideline. So for this method, if you want to design a room with neutral pressure, you want to make sure incoming and the departing has about the same flow rate. If you want to have a room in positive pressure, you want to make sure you have 125 CFA more incoming than departing. If you want room have the negative pressure, you want to make sure you have uh, the incoming air is about 125 CFM less than the departing. But there is a caution. Both of these rules of thumb method ignore each room's unique air tightness or enclosure, a fixed offset value with a few adjustment capacity could cause a problem in control and in balancing among multiple rooms. When you want to consider to control particle migration on the dual operation, then airlock is necessary. Airlock basically is a loom between adjacent areas with different cleanliness to minimize particle, microbial, or film migrations. There are four types of airlock. Cascading, bubble, sink, and a dual compartment. For cascading airlock, you want to make sure clean has the highest pressure, clean room have high pressure than airlock, and airlock have has high pressure than corridor. For bubble airlock, you want to make sure the airlock has the highest pressure. For the sink airlock, airlock should have the lowest pressure. For dual compartment airlock, virtually is a combination of bubble and sink airlock in series. In this case, if you want to walk from the corridor into the clean room, you need to go through three doors in series. Typically, Dual compartment airlock has the most stringent and the most effective means to prevent or minimize particle migration when dual operation is under consideration. How to select an airlock? If you can answer the following four questions. Is the room in positive or negative pressure? Do you have a fume or biocontamination? If containment is necessary, if personal protection is needed, if you can answer four, these four questions based on this table, you pretty much can select the most proper airlock for your application. There is an analogy between air filters and airlocks. On the left side, we can look at the configurations. If you have one filter, let's say filter efficiency 90%, then 10% of particle going to penetrate the filter. If you have two filters in series, each filter have their own efficiency, then the penetration rate of the second filter is lower. If you have three filters in series, then the penetration rate after the very last filter is much lower. The similar observation 
for door or airlocks. If you have a single door, if it's a barrier effectiveness is 80%, then during the door operation, you may have a 20% of a particle which can migrate from corridor to clean room. If you have a two doors in series, which is an airlock, then the particle migration rate after the second door is much lower. But if you have a three doors in series, the particle migration through the very last door is much, much lower. So this is a very interesting observation between air filters and the airlocks. HVAC diagram. For ISO class 789 clean rooms, typically one AHU is adequate to provide heating, cooling, ventilation, and air cleanliness control. In this case, AHU draws return air, combined with outside air, then provide supply air into each clean rooms through HEPA filters. In the middle category, for ISO class 4, 5, 6, and 7, you may want to use a primary, secondary air handling system. In this case, you are going to have uh, two units. This is what we call a designated uh, on-site air unit. This is what we call a recirculation unit. And the uh, recirculation unit typically have a much higher CFM or airflow rate than the uh, secondary designated on-site unit. And uh, in this case, you're going to provide a very high or much higher air change rate into the clean rooms, typically for cleaner classes. For ISO class 1, 2, 3, and 4, which are the very clean end of the clean room design, in addition to the primary secondary, you may also want to add a tertiary uh, air system into the entire loop. For this case, you have a designated outside air unit, the supply air into a secondary unit. The secondary unit can draw the return air from the raised floor of the clean room into the unit. Then they supply the air into a recirculation fan. You can either pressurize the plenum above the ceiling or you can use the duct. Uh, you can use the duct work connect to each HEPA filter. So for this case, you have three units to achieve very high air change rate. Sometimes could be 300 up to 600 air change rate. And uh, you may end up with more than one, but uh, two or three units like this. Air handling configuration strategies. There is a major design difference between commercial spaces and uh, clean rooms. Typically, indoor temperature humidity. For clean rooms, it could be a little bit, little bit colder and drier. But the major difference is on the air change rate and the air flow cooling ratio. For general purpose space, let's say 70 or 80 percent, about 6 to 15 air change per hour is kind of typical. Air flow versus the cooling ratio typically is around 250 to 550 CFM per turn. But for clean rooms, air change rate could be much higher. Majority of the clean rooms, they are designed between 15 up to 600 air change per hour. And the air flow versus the cooling ratio could range from 250 up to 10,000 CFM per turn. So this is the major difference between clean rooms versus commercial spaces. Clean room airflow design. Clean rooms often require high air change rate to dilute the room air in order to lower particle concentration. Its airflow rate versus cooling low is higher or much higher than those for commercial spaces. For isoclass or cleaner clean rooms, this ratio 
may be beyond the reach of a single AHU can handle. But if there is a mismatch of the design, high flow rate to a relative smaller cooling load, which could cause a cooling coil to have a sensible cooling only with latent heat removal capacity, which will result in very poor humidity control inside clean rooms. When we design clean rooms, we also need to consider the indoor air property. Based on the location inside the United States, some area could be uh, hot and dry. Other areas could be cold and wet. So the on-site air property is very important uh, for the clean room design, especially for those you have a high percentage of uh, on-site air intake. If we look at the HVC diagram, as we talked about earlier, ISO class 7A9, single unit with HEPA filter, is adequate to provide heating, cooling, ventilation, and a particle constitution control. CFM per ton ratio, typically 300, 500, sometimes could be lower, sometimes could be higher. On-site percentage could be in a range of 15 to 30 percent, based on the location and based on the percentage of on-site year that you require for your clean room. You also can do some provision for the primary loop. For example, you can bypass the supply air to mix with the return. So if you have a high latent load for on-site year, this will give you a pre-treatment of the on-site air. And in this case, your CFM per turn ratio usually toward the low end. Another provision is what we call a dual return. This is a conventional return. You also can split a portion of the return air, bypass heating cooling coil, and to achieve a higher CFM per turn, or for the case when the outside air percentage is not too high. This is what we call the primary secondary system, as we talked about earlier. CFM per turn ratio could be in a range of 800 to 5,000. Air flow rate ratio between these two fans could be in a range of 2 to 10. There is another alternation is you also can have new return pass for this configuration. In this case, CFM per turn maybe still in 800 to 5,000 range. For ISO class 1, 2, 3, 4, as we talked about earlier, typically we use primary, secondary, and tertiary units. For this case, CFM per turn ratio could be 2,500 up to 25,000. The primary flow versus secondary flow ratio is about the 2 to 10. Secondary to tertiary flow ratio could be 2 to 5. So in this case, this fan is much, much bigger than the secondary. Secondary is much bigger than the tertiary fan. So that's the another reason we do not want to combine three units into one fan system. Otherwise, you're going to have a mismatch between cooling low and the air flow requirement to achieve high air change rate. The last configuration is what we call fan filter units for primary recirculation. In this case, you can draw a portion of the return air, mix with onside air, then AHU can supply HEPA filter the clean air into a clean room to ensure the cleanliness. This application or configuration you can use virtually for any class from ISO 1 to ISO 7. And the CFM per turn ratio could range from 800 up to 25,000. The total fan filter unit flow rate over the AHU flow rate could be between 2 to 50. There are two types of airflow arrangement. This is what we call fan tower style. In this case, you have a multiple stories. The third story is the clean room floor. Underneath, is the return air floor, and the first floor is the what we call the basement floor, 
which can house uh, process equipment. In this case, you have a large return fan, draw the clean room air through raised floor perforated floor panels, pressurize the seating space above the clean room, then the air can go through these HEPA filters in order to provide filter cleaning air into the clean room. The second arrangement is the fan filter units. The space configuration is very similar as the previous slide. We have a basement, we have a return floor, we have a clean room floor, and we have a space above the clean room. In this case, we do not have consolidated return fans. Instead, each of the HEPA or OPA unit have its own fan, which they, that's what we call the fan filter units, so they can draw the air from the return floor below and uh, to push the air through the HEPA medias in order to provide a clean air into the clean room. So this configuration can provide a very good flexibility. You can relocate fan filter units to the areas which demand a certain cleanliness level. Thank you for your attention. And this concludes my presentation. And I hope this presentation is valuable to your applications.